Hey Luke here with the Cats and Carp YouTube channel. Today we're going to be doing some drift fishing and fishing for spawning catfish with floats. And I've got my float collection out. We've got big floats, we've got little floats, we've got foam floats, we've got clip-on floats. We got a little bit of everything. If you don't know a lot about floats, I did a really in-depth tutorial about all the different types of floats and when and how to use them and how to rig up floats. I'll put a link in the description to that. So this is gonna be less about how to rig up your float and more how to catch fish with them. One of the first floats I'm gonna use is the Bow Max here. It says two ounce on it. That's how much weight it takes to cock it to get it to sit right in the water. And I like this float because the hole in the stem is really small. This is 50 pound mono. Okay, so this is about the thickest stuff I'd expect someone to use a float with. And it, it, you really don't need more room than that. And if the hole is too big, then the bobber stops won't work. Like this float right here has a terrible time because all but the largest beads just slide right through the hole. So that's one of the reasons why I like the Bow Max here. Yeah. All right, hop on in, Tom. Love you, Jacob. I'll be back soon. I was thinking about coming with you because I haven't been fishing in a long time. Poor Jake crying in the front yard every time oh poor little guy he's old enough to know he wants to go but not old enough to do it Ready, buddy? Yeah. All right, let's get going. I saw it. I saw it disappear. Oh, now I remember her storing a cast to it. to make fun of you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> shad right there we just ran over a big thing of shad there's so many of them they were letting up gas bubbles boom we're tired of getting uh we're trying we're... oh yeah holy, holy. oh yeah that's more than we need that's... let's let someone go that's that's a lot of sad i'm not sure if my blood lies well yeah they'll they do. Here, let's take. Can I take one? Yeah. What about one, one yeah, that's no. swimming? Swimming well. Let's grab the ones. That one's wounded. Okay, one more and that's it. We'll keep the rest of them. Swimming well. Yeah. All right, we got all the shad we can eat. Now we're going to do a little drifting. And I'm just stopping the boat here to kind of get a feel for which way the wind is blowing. It is really, really light wind today. Only like one or two miles per hour. Let me pull out the rods and rigs and show you what we got. All right, let me show you my rods. Right here, I've got one of the Cabela's MagTouch rods. This is a discontinued rod. I've got a four-aught shiner hook. And I've got a one-ounce steel weight. And then I've got myself a big old float right here with a bunch of bait stops so I can adjust the depth. And uh, we're gonna put a piece of cut shad on this one. Right here, I've got the Chris Flores Special. This is the Muddy River Flathead Rod with an Abu Garcia uh, 6600 C4. And I've got a three ounce lead. Where right up here, I've got one of Chris Flores' Muddy River Bobbers up here. And uh, when the night falls, we can put a little glow stick on the top to see that. And we're gonna put a whole shad right on that thing all right i've got one of the warrior cat rods with the uh, ming yang 600 uh reel and i've got a big old saltwater clip-on bobber this is a weighted one about three ounces and then i've got a one ounce lead and a six aught gamakatsu circle hook we're gonna put a big chunk of shad on that as well i've got the saint Croix mojo cat medium heavy power rod with another ming yang 600 reel I've got a two ounce lead and I've got the uh, Bow Mac float, catfish float. And uh, we're going to go and try that with uh, maybe either live fish or a big chunk of shad as well. 
Over here, I've got three of the Chad Ferguson series Whisker Seeker medium heavy power rods with the Abu Garcia Catfish Special 700s. And these are all rigged up for bottom baits. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these over the side and suspend them slightly off the bottom. So as we drift, we're gonna have these baits off the sides drifting underneath the boat. All right, these are the Monster Rod Holders 3345 rod holders. I love these things. If a big catfish slams your rod, it ain't going in the water. When I first bought the boat, I bought a bunch of these plastic uh, rod holders. The first time I took it out, one of these things snapped off and I almost lost my rod. That was the day I upgraded to Monster Rod Holders. I'm gonna got this little iPilot remote here around my neck and I'm gonna use that to control the electric motor. And that's what I'm gonna use to position the boat and to try to be stealthy because we're only in like four or five feet of water. So we're gonna be going right over the top of fish. We don't wanna scare them. Just as I started giving you my little spiel about the rods, the wind kicked up and we've got about a five mile per hour breeze coming from that direction. I wanna fish these flats right here. So I'm gonna kick on the gas motor. I'm gonna go upwind to the top of that and then we're gonna drift down. We're upwind, let's get started. <laughs> this Muddy River bobber is massive. So it's perfect for a live bait. And we got about, no, a good three feet, four feet underneath the bobber. So uh, let's chuck this out here. A little bit, is that right? I'm just cutting them in half and putting them on the bottom rigs here. And just drop it down, which is not very deep. And then reel it up just a, a touch. The wind affects the pontoon boat more than it does the bobbers. So we cast the bobbers upwind, okay? And the boat will slowly drag the bobbers behind it. What will happen is we throw the bobbers out and then as the pontoon boat gets dragged faster than the bobbers, the bobbers will start to come together, right? And you can use the trolling motor to try to slow down the drift of the boat and to angle it. We're in about six and a half feet of water and the bobbers are about four feet above the bait. So we're just cruising baits about two feet off the bottom. This, this should be interesting. It's the middle of June and it's the hardest time of the year to catch catfish for me. During the spawn, the catfish really stop feeding as much and worry more about making and protecting their babies. And uh, so during this time, the fish aren't roving around hunting as much. And so being mobile and drifting baits around can be really helpful because if you go and drift that bait into a catfish nest, yeah, he might just bite even if he wasn't in the mood. So getting around and covering a lot of water is a good tactic during the spawn. And that's what we're doing right here. We're just slowly drifting these flats, hoping to drive over the top of some catfish nests. I heard that in England, so maybe. maybe. <laughs> Well, it's been kind of slow. I've lost a lot of bait, but not seen a lot of hits. And then finally just blink, got one right there. Oh, look at that. The red one just went up. Tom, Tom, come oh, here. We got a fish one. on. Yeah, right here. Right here I yeah, it reel it in. Yo, man, pounded that right there. Uh, he might be on. He's on. He's definitely on. Yeah, he's on. All right. Watch out, keep him out of that other line. Oh, oh he, he got untangled. Now keep him out from underneath the boat. All right. You don't want to be down there. Yeah. Uh, oh, he got him. Yeah, we got a catfish. Woo! Let's see, let's see how he's hooked. Oh yeah, he's hooked good. Hold on, bud. I'm just gonna pull him straight in. Woo! I catch you like cat shag. There we go. This is a mother one, is that right? No, it's, a little, it's actually a little baby one. See, see how he's got the spots on him? Huh? Oh, that's a baby. See, yeah, there's spots. He's got spots on him. <laughs> Which, you know, he's too young to be spawning probably, so he's he's one of the few that's out and about. I'll I'll well, Tom, I think we just got another hit. Uh, if you get it, well, I'll let you reel it in, buddy. Okay. See the big orange bobber on the on the on the one side? He just got he just got bonked again. Okay, okay you ready? Yeah. Please, catch one, please. Oh. 
We were a little too merciful and let too much fish go. No problem. Look at all these fish. Yeah. You gotta watch the bobbers. I can't watch the bobbers and do what I'm doing. Good. All right, put my net back in its five gallon bucket and you may recognize this five gallon bucket from part two of our abandoned island camping video on my other YouTube channel. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that one's far. Oh, this. Daddy, that one's all yours, all you, all that's you. That's all me? Dad, that's all you. Oh, Ooh, nice one, Dad. A baby one. <laughs> uh, another teeny tiny one. I, mine's is much bigger. Yeah, yours was bigger. There we go, little baby channel cat. Oh, that should have hurt. Because it took a while to have that. I was like, hey, it's the same. It's well, you can see we're hooking into a lot of little tiny ones because all the big boys are out spawning. I really should be using like two aught hooks or four aught hooks, but you know, the eight aughts were the smallest thing I had in my box already rigged up. So that's what we're using today. Oh, dang. What? Yeah, there's, well, I don't know what that was, but it jumped clean out of the water. I'll have to watch the video to see if I can see what it is. I do have this four aught shiner hook rigged up on a float. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and chuck this out since we're, uh, we're into a lot of small ones. All right, got a little bite-sized morsel of shad on this four-aught shiner hook. We're gonna wing this out there and see if uh, we don't have a little bit better hookups. Tree frog with the woodpeckers. Tom's manning the live well, keeping our shad going. Mm -hmm. Good job, Tom. Well, in case you haven't noticed, it's been a little bit of a weird year. Back in January, we bought tickets to Northern Italy, Spain, and Croatia to go do an awesome one month fishing tour of, of Europe. We were gonna go hit Wells Catfish and we we're gonna go fish for tuna off the Dalmatian coast and the Po River and the Ebro and uh, it was, yeah, that didn't happen. So uh, we're looking at uh, kind of switching gears and here hopefully, as soon as it gets a little bit safer to travel, um, we're gonna we're gonna try to go up to Alaska and do some fishing and uh, survival videos and things like that. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. If you if you guys are interested in, in that and want to put in your two cents about what you'd like to see me do in Alaska, uh, follow us on Facebook and leave a comment on the post for this video. But at any rate, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Well, there, oh. look at look at it go all the way over there, Tom. Oh, this one. Under. That's a big one. Get it. Go get him. Look how he's. This one. This, the, the, this one. Yeah. Reel him up. He, uh, he just ran off with that bobber. Yeah, that bobber was just going whoop, plunk, and then went under. Oh, I see it. I see it. Yeah. I see the. Whoa! He's moving all right. Come on. Oh, did he pop off? Yeah, he definitely did. He totally. Oh. Well, the sun is setting and we're getting a few bites here or there, but it has been slow action. But that's how it is in the spawn around here. It's, it gets kind of dead. The worst thing though, is my son is telling me he wants to name his ch future child Bubbles. People Bubbles like is a horrible name for <laughs> anything but a fish you don't love. <laughs> I love fish. If you have a fish you don't care much about, Bubbles is okay. Hold on, we've got another bite right there. Oh, see, he just went down. Oh, hey, he just popped up again. Oh, it's my ring. I think every hit but one or two have been on that orange, big orange ball. Yeah, but that one I saw it go under. Your rod, he, he pulled it enough to bench your rod a little bit. Down easy. Oh, look, look at that. See, it's moving. Oh. Reel him, reel him. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. There we go, Tom. He's on. Yeah. Good job, buddy. Good job. You're fighting him good. I learned this from you. Oh, yeah. I, I like that fish. All right, let's see what we got. Woohoo! Big one. Yeah, nice. And that's a, is that a mama one? Oh, I, I don't know. He's a, he's, a, he's a proper catfish. That's no baby catfish. Can I hold him? Yeah, sure. Why don't we do, we do a thumbnail? Ow! He's spined me. Ow, ow. Oh. Me. oh, did you get spined? Yeah, I was holding it. Oh, let's see that. Let's see that spot. Oh yeah, you got. Yeah, that's your. I think that's uh, one of your first real spines there. Now, I Tommy, have... you know what happens when you get spined? What? It's like Spider Man. You know how Spider Man got his powers because he was bit by a spider. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now that you've been spined by a catfish, you have catfish powers. Oh, yeah. 
You can catch catfish anywhere. It kind of hurt. It felt like a big needle went into it. It really hurt. It just... Oh, yeah, yeah. Look at that. It looks, it looks kind of like a little bug bite. Right, almost. Well, the fishing wasn't amazing, but that's kind of how it is during the spawn. I mean, it's a lot of smaller channel catfish, and, and it's slowish action. It'll be like this until the 1st of August, and then it'll start to pick up. And then by the end of August, beginning of September, it'll be amazing fishing. Massive flatheads, big blues, yeah. And what happens is the blue... Well, there we go. I mean, nothing too amazing. This is pretty typical. A lot of small channel catfish this time of year um, in, in June and July. And then in August, the blue catfish get off the spawn first. And then in September, the flatheads come out and play. And it's just amazing catfishing up until, oh, about November, December. Then it changes to the winter patterns. But so yeah, this is actually the hardest time of year to catch a catfish in my area is June and July. But uh, we could still do it. We could still, we could still get it out. And we had fun trying some new techniques. And uh, Tommy uh, got his radioactive catfish powers today. <laughs> well, we hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to see more videos from the Catfish and Carp YouTube channel, don't forget to... Click subscribe. Nailed it. All right. We put out new videos every Saturday morning. Thanks for watching.